Well, hello and welcome from all of us here at Redeemer. It's a wonderful morning to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord this Easter morning. So happy Easter to you. He is risen. And uh, I just want to welcome you as a, maybe a longtime member joining us today or somebody who's watching as part of our online community. We're glad that you're with us to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. I'm Daniel, one of the pastors here. I'll be leading in our message later in the service. You'll see Pastor Chad as well leading us through uh, the worship service. And our goal here today is to invite all of you to become students, believers, and followers of Jesus, our resurrected Lord. Our service will be uh, around an hour long, and uh, there'll just be some wonderful music, a chance to dive into God's Word. And uh, you'll hear about a Connect card as well. There's a link to that on our website or some other places as well. Great chance to allow us to connect with you as well, since we can't see who you are. And uh, you can share a prayer request with us if you'd like. Also want to let you know we'll have some hosts joining us for our, our chat here online today. Uh, you can certainly share with us where you're watching from, how many are with you, a, a song or a reading that connected with you. Uh, and just know our hosts are there to help you engage with our service here today as well. We're glad that you've joined us. Our worship service is about to begin. And so we invite you in uh, to worship with us, to uh, enjoy this celebration of our resurrected Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Stone has been rolled away. Hallelujah. The crucified is risen. Hallelujah. Christ has conquered death by the cross. He has come out of the tomb. Christ has risen and will not die again. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we gather on this day to celebrate, let us take a moment to pause and reflect on the daily struggle we have against everything that would draw us, against, draw us away from our loving God and loving our neighbor. Gracious God, through that Easter morning, you changed everything, yet we don't change the way we live. You have freed us from sin and death, yet we daily choose to distance ourselves from you and to sin against others. We fail to live in the freedom you offer through the cross. We try to earn your grace and compare ourselves to others. As we come to you in confession, we ask you to help us live free of guilt and full of your spirit. Paul writes, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For then the saying will be written, will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's because of that victory that, he has come, that, that has come true today that I can confidently proclaim to all of you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us sing. The risen Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, for our redemption, you gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of sin in the grave. Because of Easter, we are forever changed. Change our hearts this day, Lord, that dying to the sin for which your son gave his life, we might rise with him to live before you forever. This we pray through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We'd like to invite the children forward for a special message with Anna this day. Come on up, kids. Guys, how's everybody today? Are we good? Are we awake? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I feel kind of too. Um, it is good to see you guys. Happy Easter. It is so good that you guys are here. Okay, I want to teach you guys something that we like to do in church um, around this time of time of year during Easter, we like to say, I'm going to say the words, he is risen, and then I want you guys, and the big kids, you get to do this too, I want you to say, he is risen indeed, alleluia. Okay, so let's practice that. I'm going to say, he is risen, and you guys are going to say, he is risen indeed, alleluia. All right. Now, big kids, could you sound less grumpy when you say that? Um, it's good news, so we should use our happy voices. So let's try it again, okay? So I'm going to say, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Better. We'll practice again in a minute. Um, that's awesome because that is what we celebrate at Easter, right? We celebrate that Jesus is risen, that he is alive. Now, show me with your hands. Did any of you find Easter eggs at your house this morning? Yeah? Yeah? Those are kind of fun. So I found these Easter eggs 
And we're going to use them to help remind us of the story. Yeah, I got a blue egg too, which is kind of cool. It's gonna, we're going to use these to remind us of the story of Holy Week and remind us of the story of Jesus, right? Because that's what we're all here for today. So we're going to start with this orange egg and we're going to see what's inside of it. Do you guys know what this is? Bread. It is bread. Look, I can eat it. It's bread. We have bread in our first egg because we're reminded on Monday, Thursday, a few days ago, is when Jesus broke bread with his disciples. He had a last supper with them. He ate with them and had that very special meal that we get to celebrate and the big kids get to partake of today too in that communion. But we remember that Jesus broke bread with his disciples on Thursday. And then this is our Friday egg. Do you guys know what happened to Jesus on Friday, on Good Friday? I have a cross in here, right, to remind us that on Good Friday, Jesus died on the cross. He went to that cross and he took all of our sin, all of the stuff that we struggle with, that maybe we don't do right all the time, he took that with him to the cross and he died on that cross. And then after he had died, you know what, his friends had to take his body and they wrapped him. Do you guys know what this is? It's cloth right? So they wrapped his body in some cloth. They wrapped it all up because that's what they did it during that time. And they placed him in a tomb. That's where people were buried during Jesus's time is he was in a tomb. And then here, what do you think's in that one? What's that? It's a rock. Now this rock reminds us that there was a big stone that was rolled in front of the tomb. My big st the big stones didn't fit in my egg, so I brought a little one today. But it reminds us that there was a huge stone that was rolled in front of that tomb so that nobody could get in there and nobody was supposed to get out because it was huge and big. And so Jesus was kind of put behind a tomb. But then do you guys know what happened on Easter? Was he still in that tomb? What's in my egg? It was empty, just like the tomb was. The tomb was empty because Jesus is risen. He rose from the grave. Do you remember what we just learned? I say, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The egg was empty because the tomb was empty. Now there's one more in here. Now this is kind of fun. I put a few candies in this one because the candy kind of reminds us of the sweetness of Easter. Easter is the best, you guys. It's my favorite time of year because we're reminded that Jesus saved our lives, right? And these are lifesavers. I put the lifesavers in there because Jesus saved our lives when he died for us on the cross and when he rose from the grave. He was given us the best thing ever. He was given us life and a spot in heaven and time with him and we get to live with him forever when we get to go to heaven. And that's beautiful. And we get to know every day that we are loved and forgiven by Jesus because he died for us and he rose from us and that's what we get to celebrate today. Will you guys fold your hands and close your eyes and pray with me? I'm going to say a phrase you can repeat after me. Big kids are invited to pray with us too. Say, Dear Jesus, thank you for your death and resurrection that we celebrate every year. Thank you for loving me and forgiving me every day. Amen. Amen. All right, one more time, my friends. He is, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So much better. Thanks for being happy, big kids. Um, awesome. You guys can head back to your seats. Thank you so much for coming up this morning. We hear God's word for this Resurrection Sunday beginning in the Old Testament with Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all people, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, 
Surely this is our God. We trusted in him, and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. This is the word of our Lord. And our second reading for today is from our epistle lesson, 1 Corinthians 15. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and which you have taken your stand. By the gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word that is preached. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of who are still living, though some of them have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James and then to all the apostles, and least of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was within me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you have believed. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. From Mark chapter 16, this is the account of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, 
They were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robe and sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they lay him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. Then you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the resurrection gospel of our Lord. And let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed as printed before us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated.
Well, grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father and our Lord and our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Unfinished. Now, maybe I, it's just me, but I think it's probably a bit of all of us that uh, maybe we shudder a little bit at that word. Uh, now, uh, for myself, uh, I couldn't help but thinking of when I, uh, when I play video games, though it's not that often, uh, I'm a, a completionist. So I like to find every little item and do every storyline and every little thing I can do so I get 100% completion. Uh, the same goes for when I do various tasks or projects. I, I need a nice little bow tied on the end uh, to uh, uh, say that it is completely finished. And I think we're all a little bit that way. I, it, maybe it's for you, it's the puzzle. And you put it all together and there's one missing piece that you just cannot find. And you can never say that puzzle is finished. Or maybe if you're a student and uh, you have, have to finish all your assignments to be able to graduate, and for some reason there is something you couldn't finish, and then you couldn't graduate. That would be a pretty frustrating reality. Or if it is a huge project at work or at home of some kind, uh, of course, we all want to be able to just say, it is finished, and say, uh, I'm going to move on to something else. Of course, when it comes to sleep, we all want to say, we finished our sleep and got enough sleep the night before. Uh, with taxes, it is tax time of the year. Uh, you do need to finish your tax return because it would be a bad thing for you if you didn't. And it goes for our favorite TV shows, movies, books, whatever it may be. Uh, if we knew that it, was, it had an unfinished ending it's likely we wouldn't watch it at all. And we've all experienced having uh, a show canceled of some kind, and it just ends and never is really finished. It's not very satisfying. And I think if we look back throughout history as well, we see that same kind of unfinished nature to history. From the second that Adam and Eve rebelled against God in the Garden of Eden all the way to Easter— People had completely been unable to tie a bow on sin, to do anything about our sinfulness. I don't have to describe to you how, how we even still feel the effects of sin, how broken our world is, how we constantly deal with hardship, pain, and loneliness, how we all long for a second chance when we make various mistakes, how we desire an alternate ending to various storylines in our lives. We desire someone to finish what humans started thousands of years ago. In fact, that's what that opening video reminded us of, that we needed a finisher to all of those things. There was the Garden of Eden, that where sin entered the world, and it was very much unfinished. There was Noah's Ark, where God said, I'm going to do something about the sinfulness of people, and the flood comes upon the earth. And yet, even after this point, sin plagues people. Even Christ's birth leads to something more. All of his miracles do the same. Even back to Maundy Thursday, the, the meal of Jesus' body and blood pointed us to Good Friday and to today. These things on their own are, are kind of unfinished storylines. So I find it interesting too then that our Easter story from Mark's gospel today kind of seems a little bit unfinished. Here's that last verse of the entire book of Mark. It says, Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because... They were afraid. And that's it. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, had went to the tomb on Easter morning, and they had simply gone to finish the story as they knew it. They had not been able to give Jesus a proper burial, because on Friday, Jesus had died. Good Friday for you and for me. The women had been watching. People of all kinds had been watching. 
And there hadn't been time for that proper burial because the Saturday, the Saturday in between was a Sabbath day when no one was able to work. This means they had a lot of time to come to terms with kind of it just being an ending. Jesus is dead. The time they had with him felt like it was for nothing. And so all they could do was try to bury him properly. They tried to write the conclusion to the story themselves to try to at least bring a closure. But as we know from the story, instead, when they arrive, the stone is rolled away. It's a, it's a different ending than they were expecting because there's an angel there. And he says, don't be alarmed. Don't do that thing that you were already doing because you thought you knew how this was going to go. Jesus has risen. Go and tell the disciples and Peter that Jesus is going ahead of you into Galilee and you'll see him there. You'll see that the ending is different than you had thought. And yet, despite the angels telling of an alternate ending, the women don't really tell anyone, do they? They, they don't know what to make of it. They're just trembling and bewildered. It seems very unfinished. It seems like the ending has been left off of Mark. If you look at the other gospel writers, how they tell the Easter story, they tell it with joy, with people seeing Jesus personally. Mark ends with fear. They flee and they're afraid. So the, really the big question is, why? Why does it seem so unfinished? Why end the story here? Well, I think the clue for you and me is, is actually in this word, bewildered. The idea of that word is, is like they slipped on a banana peel. They had, had no idea what had just occurred, and it knocked them on their feet. Kind of reminded me a bit of the movie Empire, The Empire Strikes Back, Star Wars reference for you all. Now, whether you are a Star Wars buff like myself or not, uh, I think you'll, you'll uh, understand this, uh, this idea. The Empire Strikes Back is considered one of the greatest cliffhangers in movie history. Because one of the main characters, Han Solo, was captured. And then at the very end of this, the second part of this trilogy of movies, you get this twist where the villain, Darth Vader, says, I am your father to the good guy. People couldn't believe it. And the movie basically just ended with that bombshell. You can imagine what it would have been like if there was no third movie, if Return of the Jedi had never been made for some reason. People all said, what, what just happened? What is this ending? Is it true? What is the rest of the story going to look like? It left people with those questions to form all kinds of theories of what was going to turn out. But there's also a glimmer of hope there as well, that there would be something that would turn the story out for good, maybe, even if that was true. Kind of like Mark. The news of Jesus was hard to believe. We see how the women reacted initially. You can imagine the kind of questions that they likely asked. This man that was buried is alive? Could it be true that Jesus is stronger than the cross and the grave? Could Jesus be so merciful that even those who abandoned him, like Peter, it even mentions Peter specifically here. Could it be that he's that merciful that he would be welcomed back. Jesus would welcome him back to meet him. Is all Jesus predicted actually true? And you see that glimmer of hope in this story too. Three years later with this Star Wars trilogy, the fans got the rest of the story with that third movie. Actually turned out it was all true, of course, if you know the movies. There was no lying at all. That was what set up the rest of the story. And it did set up an awesome conclusion 
to all three movies. Likewise, as it turns out in this story, Mark is finished. It's finished just the way it was meant to. Because this ending sets up an awesome conclusion to Jesus' story. That Mark's ending is not the end. Because when is an ending not the end? When a dead man rises from the tomb. Just think of how Jesus himself said on Good Friday, it is finished. He didn't say the the story is ended, this is all there is. He said it is finished. We might ask, well, what was? Well, all those things of Scripture, all of history, the Garden of Eden where sin entered the world, that was taken care of. Noah's Ark that was seemingly unfinished because sin still was a problem. That was taken care of. Even Jesus' birth led to something more. It pointed us to what he would do. And his body and blood, of course, was shed on the cross. And so that means that everything prophesied about him was completed. Death was defeated. There was victory. Salvation is accomplished Redemption for you and me is attained. These are finishing words. The story, Jesus' work, was finished. But that also means that there is nothing more we need to add. There's nothing more to write. The entire storyline is already written. And it's not conditional then on how good you are or on fixing all of your mistakes, being good enough first. Because if it were, the story would never be finished. There would be no third movie. So what Mark is doing then as he tells this story seemingly with a missing ending is he's telling the story of Easter So that you and me can't help but read it and then tumble out of bed on Easter morning and every time we come and worship and see that Jesus is risen, see it for ourselves, see that it is finished, and then live knowing how the story ends too. Easter, Jesus' resurrection, is God's announcement to the world that the story isn't over Since he rose, we will too. And then the story ends with life eternal in heaven. So for you and for me, that means in this story too, there's hope. When a friend betrays you, it is not the end of the story. When you feel alone, when there's disease or or sickness that is just plaguing you or, or somebody you know, when you've lost a loved one, when the world just seems messed up and you don't know where it's all going, when you've made mistakes, when you feel like just throwing in the towel and you deal with stress or you're despairing for some reason, it's not the end of the story. Because it was Jesus who finished the story. We know the ending, that Jesus took all those things too on himself and did not abandon us to the consequences of the sin of history, of our sin, to hardship, pain, sadness. These things will not have the last word because Jesus finished off sin and death. Those things are not the end of the story, but life is. The focus then today for you and me is is not then on on things that we have done that are, are, are wrong or things that we should have done that we just left unfinished. The focus then is on what God has done, what Jesus has finished, that Jesus is risen, and that This is how the story will end. That Jesus is going ahead of you into heaven. There you will see him, just 
as he told you. As 1 Corinthians 15 puts it, when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true, the ending. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? In this life, you may tremble, you may be bewildered, but because Jesus is risen, because this is true, because this story has been finished, you can live out the ending to the story with a huge smile on your face. You can jump up and down. You can rejoice and tell everyone you see. For the only hope we have has happened. Jesus has come to our rescue. It's not unfinished. It is finished. He is risen. And now that's a good ending. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and our minds as we continue to receive peace from that resurrection victory, that finishing to the story in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Daniel. On this Resurrection Sunday, those finishing words, knowing death is defeated and our hope is complete in the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, It's good to have you with us here. We're glad you've chosen to uh, celebrate uh, our Lord's uh, resurrection here at Redeemer and to those watching online as well. In a few moments, we'll receive the Lord's Supper. We will do that today by way of continuous communion coming up the side aisles and then Uh, receiving the body and blood of our Savior, heading back to our seats through the uh, center aisle as well. But this time, let us continue our worship as we bring our offerings to the Lord.
I invite you to stand as we continue with our prayers at the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the creation that surrounds us, that all of God's creatures may continue to sing his praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Thank you, Father, for the new life you have given us. For the church and her witness to the saving gospel of our risen Lord, that we may share the blessings of new life that we've been given. Let us pray to the Lord. Thank you, Father, for the new life you have given us. For all all our homes, workplaces, and communities, that the blessing of Christ's saving work may be evident in each and every place. Let us pray to the Lord. Thank you, Father, for the new life you have given us. For all who need the healing of our great physician, Jesus Christ, that they may be restored in both body and soul, Let us pray to the Lord. Thank you, Father, for the new life you have given us. For these prayers and for all the silent prayers of our hearts and minds that we may boldly approach the throne of grace with the confidence that is ours because of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Thank you, Father, for the new life you have given us. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of our risen Lord be with you always. You may be seated.
I invite you to stand. And now these good gifts from our Lord, the precious body and blood of of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may they strengthen you, preserve you, and keep you in the one true faith, both now and forever. Depart with great joy and with our Lord's peace. Amen. We pray. Merciful Father, in this sacrament we have tasted and seen that you are good. The blessings of the first Easter day have been given to us on this Easter day. Help us to go forth from this celebration and to share the hope you've placed within us. With all the angel choirs and with all the saints on earth, we pray, we pour out the strains of joy and bliss, saying, Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Give thanks and sing. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and go with you always. Amen. Amen.